Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar of an introduction to multi-cloud infrastructure skills for the AWS and Azure professional. I'm Carrie Brody uh, from Google Cloud Learning Services, and I am super excited today to introduce you all to Anne Henry, who is a learning portfolio manager here and who will be walking us through some of our newest course offerings. All righty. And I do have a marvelous, <laughs> marvelous overview of what we're doing today. So um, we're welcoming you. We'll go over why multi-cloud is important, an overview of our new offerings. We'll talk a little bit about the skill badges. And then of course, everyone's favorite part, we'll have some Q&A. So please feel free to pop your questions in the chat at any time. Alrighty, without further ado, I'd love to introduce you to Anne. Anne is the Learning Portfolio Manager for Infrastructure Modernization here at Google Cloud, and she's been in technical education for a long time, since 2010. It's not that long, though. No, 13 years. It's enough time to have a lot of experience, but still have a fresh take on it, in my opinion. That could just be because I really like her. So I'm going to bring her up here. Welcome, Welcome Anne. Anne. Hi, Carrie. Thank you. Nice to meet everybody. Excellent. All righty. So our goal for today's webinar, people out there, is to help you upskill your cloud knowledge to utilize multiple cloud environments. So the content in these learning offerings that we're presenting in this session really are intended for an audience who is very comfortable and familiar with another cloud's ecosystem but we're all about inclusivity. So if you're not familiar with another cloud, that's also okay. Uh, you can stick around and you can also head over to Cloud Skills Boost for some basic and some not so basic core infrastructure skills. And I will go put that in the chat so you can have a link there. Alrighty, the question on everyone's mind, why should I care about multi-cloud? So I'll go ahead and explain why this is so important, Carrie. This is really, as you as you know, a lot of the small businesses, small and medium businesses we get come in and they're like, okay, we don't have any cloud knowledge. We can come in and, and learn Google Cloud. Let's take three foreign languages, for example, right? English, well, not necessarily all foreign, but like English or native tongue, Spanish and French. Assume that say AWS is English, um, Azure is French and GCP is Spanish. Not being inclusive, all languages are all, all have a fundamental foundation, right? They're all Romance languages or at least Germanic in their nature. They all have the same grammatical structure. We're not throwing in something like that's either a Cyrillic language like Russian or throwing in an Asian language like Korean, Japanese, or, or Mandarin. We're talking about three languages that are fairly similar but different enough that we have to know how to speak to each of them. A lot of people who come into Google Cloud who already have established clouds come in from either AWS or Azure. So what we're doing is saying, okay, cool, we respect your knowledge. We know where you're coming from. Let's go ahead and make sure we can speak your language. So for Azure, we have things that are spoken in your narrative so you can learn the GC, the, the Google Cloud uh, environment and learn it from an Azure perspective. Okay, this is how IAM works in Azure, for instance, or the same with AWS, because AWS is IAM. All three work very differently, but sound similar. That's probably the best analogy in this space, right, Carrie? Yeah. So your identity management is all done a little differently, but it's all fundamentally the same. It's all a form of identity management. So we speak to you in that context and teach you how to do Google Cloud, the Google Cloud ecosystem in that way, but from that perspective, so you don't feel lost or you don't feel like we're talking to you like you don't know what cloud is. That makes so much sense. And as someone who uh, came into tech from a non-tech background and was very fortunate to have uh, mentors who would translate things like into film and for me, uh, that was very helpful <laughs> for, for me to expand my comprehension. So I really, really appreciate that. Um, and I, I do love data. So I am going to show a little data about why multi-cloud is important as well. Um, as you can see here, multi-cloud is gaining traction. Uh, according to the survey from HashiCorp, it's positioned to be one of 2023's defining trends in cloud computing. And 
um, as you can see, adoption has increased for companies of all sizes. So that's pretty significant and I would say unique that across all sectors, it's just growing and growing, including this huge jump in small business adoption. And I don't know, I was going to say obviously, but I don't know if it's that obvious, but what this does mean is that as multi-cloud is growing exponentially, what's the biggest blocker for companies? Talent, knowledge, skills, 76% of employers are already using multi-cloud and over half of them are pointing to a lack of skills as their biggest challenge in survival. So that is one of the reasons we want to give you skills. And you're not wrong. And the, the thing about this that makes it interesting is people come in thinking like you're coming in and you want to have a multi-cloud environment and that's what you want to have established. And that's not the case. It grows more like mushrooms, right? You have like random varieties of mushrooms being, you know, maybe somebody starts out with Google Cloud, maybe somebody adds Azure for it, or maybe somebody adds AWS. And then you have all these random clouds talking to each other and people need to know, oh, okay, well, we've got this AWS background. Why don't we have people kind of come up and upskill in Google Cloud's infrastructure? And that's where the courses uh, that we're gonna talk about today come into play. Yeah, it, it makes sense, I guess, I, I don't know this, and Anne, I don't know if you know, but it doesn't seem like a company would start out that I don't say, okay, we are going to split our, <laughs> our stuff across three or more different clouds. That's just our initial intention. It seems like they would start with one, and then as they grow and get different products, different technologies, they spread out. So it does seem... Like something that kind of kind of happens organically, which I don't I don't know how that informs the planning. But I'm very excited to hear about these new learning offerings because I think they'll be very useful. So without further ado, an overview of our new offerings. Okay. So this is a little bit about uh, what your cloud journey could look like. As you can see, we've got um, a lot of different options, but what we're focusing on today are that infrastructure modernization and the hybrid and multi-cloud paths. So for AWS, let's start with that one. The AWS one, we have, we start in and we kind of go into, all right, we talk about Google Cloud IAM and we talk about networking for AWS professionals. We're going to do something similar with, with Azure as well. What we want to do here is go, I am as different. This is fundamentally how you do things and how you interact with the Google Cloud hierarchy, which includes things like the organization as a whole, then it's divided into folders. And in those folders, you have projects. And those projects are how you do things, which is differently than how AWS does. And then from there, you want to build out your compute. In AWS, these are called um, the instances or they're called, or you have kind of a snapshot of it called an I, in AMI. Uh, it's been a while since I've played with AWS, but that would probably be the closest thing if I came in and took this course. I would want to come in and come in from the AWS Cloud Engineer's perspective, not necessarily the Azure one, because that was my background coming in. And then with Google Cloud Storage, how does that map to something like the S3 storage, right, and the containers for AWS? And containers in AWS are you use a lot of EKS. And then for AWS, their monitoring system is called CloudWatch, ours is CloudOps. So we wanna know how to talk to somebody and say, okay, this is how it works. So if you're coming into Google Cloud, you're not gonna to need to know what a compute engine is. It's basically a virtual machine. You're gonna to need to know how does that relate to a AWS EC2 instance. So you're gonna to wanna to know how everything relates to each other and that's what these classes are set up to do. So they're set up so you can talk to you and you come out and you can say, great, I know the things. What do I have to prove it? And that's what skill badges are for. And we'll get to skill badges next. But before that, let's go over into a little bit of the Azure stuff that we're going to talk about. So the Azure um, content is similar to AWS in the sense we're speaking your language, right? We want to make sure that I am is different and we understand. Um, virtual machines on Azure work, you know, similar to compute engines, and there's blob storage, which in Amazon is S3, in Google Cloud is Google Cloud Storage, right? Everybody, they're fundamentally the same things, but they're called things differently, 
right? You know, kind of like in foreign languages, things are called things different. Like how when I visit my family in South Africa, it says robot ahead, <laughs> but it's a traffic light. Exactly. Yes. And in, in other languages, right, they're called different things. So, yes. So um, it's been a while since I studied either French or Spanish. So I can't remember what stoplight is in either one. So Me neither. You either? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oops. Okay, oops. Yeah, don't know what those are. So, yeah, so you can see how they all match, right? Like, we have managed Kubernetes in AWS. It's called EKS. In Google Cloud, it's GKE. In, in Azure, it's called AKS, you know, Azure Kubernetes uh, services. So we have everything that, that's similar, but they all have different functionalities and they all have different trade-offs depending on how you do them. So between networking, monitoring, um, your compute, your containers, your Kubernetes, we got to make sure we're speaking your language as you're ramping up and upskilling into Google Cloud. So that's what these courses are. And they both have a skill badge with it. So Carrie, um, we should tell the gang here a little bit more about skill badges. What do you think? I love skill badges. I really do. Um, as I said, I transitioned into tech uh, mid-career and education obviously was very helpful, not only to learn things, but for my psychological safety and skill badges, certifications, all those kinds of credentials, super, super useful because it wasn't my focus when I was in school. And so knowing that not only I can learn new things, but I can also prove that knowledge to, um, not that I'm looking for another job, but to potential employers or potential new managers, anything like that has been very helpful. So skill badges, what, what are they? Great question, you might not know. Uh, a skill badge is a form of credential. Google Cloud skill badges recognize an individual's cloud proficiency with Google Cloud products and services. Uh, and our skill badges are digital, which is great. Um, it means that you can easily display them either on social media, maybe your LinkedIn profile, or in your email signature. And people can actually click on them and it will be, they'll be taken to a verification page where they can see that you did indeed earn that credential. It is yours. And also what it means and what the uh, either the exam or the course, whatever you obtained your credential for, what that covered. So not only does it show your proficiency, but it also shows what you're proficient in. Um, and do you have anything to add to that? I do. And additionally, after you take the skill badges and you've taken this learning path in Google Cloud Learning Services, it sets you up really well to study for the professional cloud architect. So we've intentionally targeted people who have the technical skills and the architecture knowledge in both Azure and AWS. So great. If you want to take other certifications from other clouds, fine. We're cool with that. Please also take ours as well. We'd love to have you come take our PCA exam. The more the merrier. Absolutely. That's great. So people who maybe were already thinking of studying for the PCA, but might have thought, well, I'm not sure because I have all of this knowledge in this other cloud, and I don't know if this would be either too difficult or too redundant, can rest a little more assured because we've taken the best parts of exactly. to give to them. Exactly. It gets even better than that because now you're stronger because you now have certifications in multiple clouds. So this is one of the things that the skill badges I use at entry level. And then you could go, okay, great. Well, not entry level in the sense of entry level knowledge, but in the sense of at least some form of certification that you know this, right? It's a credential. Yeah. You know this. Okay, we've got a starting point. Great. It should help you build your confidence. Oh, great. I can study for the PCA and go get that. Now. That's, and I will say for me, um, getting my Cloud Digital Leader certification, I was actually very surprised at the level of confidence and like psychological safety that going through the process of studying and taking the exam gave me. So I I can personally endorse <laughs> credentials as a great tool. Um, and the way to get a skill badge also, you complete a series of hands-on labs. There is a usually a final assessment challenge that tests your skills. Uh, I like to think about skill badges as kind of like checkpoints along a learning path towards certification. So you don't have to get a certification. You also don't have to collect skill badges to get the certification, but I do recommend it. Um, a lot of our skill badges are baked into a lot of our exam prep materials. 
And also it's just a really great way to be able to look back on your progress and have something tangible to point to. The other thing it does is even after you get your certification, if you want to do some, you know, post learning path learning, it will give you say ways to re either reinforce knowledge or provide a continuing education aspect of, of certification that a lot of people don't look at the certification. Go, Great. I've got it. Now what I don't do, I, what do I do need to take to stay on top of things? So it also provides that as well, even post certification. Yes. Excellent. All right. I'm also going to put in the chat right now, a link to our a fabulous blog post that will tell you more about where you can start your multi-cloud learning journey. And I think we are ready for our Q&A. Um, if you are watching and you have a question, please feel free to pop it in the chat. Uh, in the meantime, I actually have a couple of questions and that I think maybe you would be very well positioned to answer. So let's say I have worked in both AWS and Azure. So I'm actually equally familiar with both, don't know anything about Google Cloud. Which one should I start with? Should I start with one specifically? So you would do one or the other. Okay. And this is actually a really good question. So I'm glad you asked it. You could do one or the other, but Say you're a polyglot, right? You speak multiple languages. You have your native tongue, English, and you speak French and Spanish. And you and I both study both, so I figured it's good. So for your secondary language, I'd say, which one do you go to more and rely on more? In my case, it would be, okay, if I'm coming in and I have both, I would probably go with the first one I learned just because that's what I'm more comfortable with. But that's the way I would do it. What are you more comfortable with? Not necessarily which one do you have more knowledge of versus the other one, but which one are you more comfortable with, which feels closer to your native tongue and is easier for you to convert to in your head versus one that you're like, oh, it's kind of a struggle over here or it takes a little bit more effort because we want to make this easier on the learners, not harder, right? So that would be the way to do it, right? You, I mean, it's like, great, we can say hello and thank you in multiple languages, right? You could say, hola, you know, and what's gracias? Or you could say, bonjour, uh, merci beaucoup, right? You can do both. But which one is easier for you to feel like you're like, okay, which is one that feels a little bit more natural? For me, it's Spanish. My French, I kind of have to go somewhere in a language file in my head and go, how do I say that? Except for, it's not my fault. Like, in the MFO, that's easy for me to remember in French, but I don't remember I say it in Spanish. So, uh, mine is, uh, je ne regrette rien, which means I regret <laughs> nothing. Uh, that's, thank you for that answer. I think, given, I'm, I'm going to stick with this language analogy because on my own, what I probably would have thought of is, hmm, which one's going to be more useful? And I don't think that's necessarily, an, I, I mean, I live in California. I grew up speaking French. I've been learning Spanish, Spanish living in California. So useful, so much more useful than French, I would say. But that doesn't necessarily translate out of our analogy. So I love I love encouraging folks to stick with what they're more comfortable. Now, you did say they should pick one. So are we saying that if you are working in both Azure and AWS, this course, you would want to pick the one that you feel the most cozy with yes. and go through that one. And once you do that, you you will have basically gotten the information that you need. Correct. You okay. don't need to necessarily do the other one. You don't have to do them both. I mean, if you want to, cool, but I, I'm all for it, but I don't think that's going to do anybody any favors. I think it's designed to do one or the other, not necessarily, you know, know both and, and figure that out. So as we move forward and as we learn what learner needs and learner wants are, we're going to keep evolving this type of curriculum. So the, this is just the entry point of it, but we see that there's a need of it, right? A lot of people who come into Google Cloud don't come in from, you know, Greenfield is what we call it, right? Just, okay, we just wanna be Google Cloud. A lot of them either come from AWS or Azure and they don't necessarily want to do an exact hybrid model or anything. They wanna know, how do we have the networks talking to each other? How do you use BigQuery, for example, to grab stuff out of an S3 bucket or Microsoft Blob Storage? You know, how do we do this? This is the type of thing we want to know how to do. So 
we want to at least get you an entry point at this point. And then from there, I absolutely, as the learning portfolio manager, want to know your feedback on what you think of the curriculum. Did it provide you what you need? Are you looking for something else? This is great. Let's keep building on it. Please, you know, let's get give me the feedback however possible. We love feedback. In yeah, fact, at the end of the session, I'll be linking a, a form in the in the chat so you can, uh, or in the comments rather, so you can please, if you would like, give us your feedback on the session, what you might like to see in the future. We'd really appreciate it. Also, be an opportunity in that form for you to subscribe to some learning content so that you can find out what's coming down the pipeline uh, with our multi-cloud learning offerings. Alrighty, I'm just checking our comments to see if they're uh, are any other questions? I see here, I think this is more of a comment, but I'm gonna show it anyway, because I think it's a, it's an apt one. Multi-cloud will let us use benefits of other clouds. Correct. Yes, I think that is uh, something I really appreciate about this offering is that obviously I work at Google Cloud. I work on Google Cloud most of the time. But I definitely am exposed to other clouds, even in my job. So I know that it's something that other people are dealing with. And I think that it's uh, it's great that we are opening up and seeing, seeing the benefits that we can get from working in a multi-cloud environment because it's great and really the best way. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good analogy here. I'm just going to say the best way to move forward is together. And that applies to clouds, too, in addition to people. <laughs> well, OK, I'll give you an example. Um, we have a lot of people who work who came from Microsoft or AWS here in Google Cloud and vice versa. Right. And it's reality. It's tech. It's today's world. We need to be able to speak to somebody who came in from AWS or Microsoft and understands, you know, you know, either Azure, or, you know, or AWS, and you'll go, oh, here's how we can relate to you. So it's bridging that gap. It's providing that translation, which we need. Definitely. Yeah. Whether and whether it's colleagues or customers, I mm -hmm. think that is a very important aspect of this. Or partners, even. Or partners. Can't forget partners. No, don't forget That's partners. A big population. Don't worry, partners. I'm not <laughs> forgetting you. <laughs> Alrighty. I am going to link that event feedback survey in our comments here. Um, I don't see any other questions. However, I'll also be linking a link to our learning forums in the Google Cloud community, where if you're watching this after it was live, thank you for watching. And we would love to have your questions there as well. Uh, we're always looking. There's always lots of people in there answering questions. Um, but I guess in closing, Anne, is there anything you'd like to add? No, I want to thank everybody who attended. Um, again, love your feedback. Please uh, come to the forums and I'll even pop my head in there myself. Yay. Wonderful. Alrighty. And I'm going to put that Google Cloud community link into the comments or the chat right now. Wonderful. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Usually I say we'll see you in the cloud, but today I'm going to say we'll see you in the clouds. <laughs> Plural. <laughs> Bye. Bye.